Good day, everyone. So for today, we will be discussing loose women art as well as indigenous people's art at the end. Next slide, please. So first, the definition and history. Loose women art reflects the Filipino society and the wide range of cultural influences on the culture of the Philippines and how these hone the country's arts. These works have developed and accumulated in the Philippines from pre-colonial period up to the present. Next slide, please. First, let's talk about the pre-colonial period. So during this period, indigenous Filipinos had their own art as well as literature and architecture, which is rooted from their cultures and rituals. Next is the Islamic period in which Said Abu Bakar came to Sulu and spread the Arabic religion in Mindanao and was embraced by the Maguindanaoan, Tausog, Yakan, Samal, and Bajau. The Quran serves as their literature and the mosque is their prime architecture. The sculpture Ukil or Okir focused on sculpting, molding, pottery, and weaving with patterns. Next slide, please. Next is the Spanish colonial period in which it focused on Christianity and Catholicism as influenced by the Spaniards. Churches are designed with Baroque features, sculptures focus on saint figures, and the visual arts mostly showed rebellion against Spain. So as you can see, the painting here is the first mass at Limasawa by Carlos Francisco. Next is American occupation. So during this period, architectures were modernized and vaudeville, a theater show that focuses on comedy, was also released. The sculpture of the UP oblation made by Guillermo Tolentino in 1935 was also from this period. Next slide, please. And then we have the Japanese occupation. So this is considered as the darkest period of the Philippine history because most of the artworks were destroyed. Modern art slowly emerged, which was pioneered by the triumvirate composed of Victoria Idades, Carlos Francisco, and Galo Campo. Then we have 70s to present. So during this time, multimedia, mixed media, and transmedia were introduced. So figurative and non-figurative arts were developed. Modern architectures like malls, real estates, condos, hotels, resorts, and commercial buildings were also built. So an example in here of um, a modern art is Isla Hubad by Neil Pasilan. Next slide, please. The characteristics of loose women art shows diversity, multiplicity, and complexity. Um, it is unique in cultural experience because it's designed to represent rather than describe. Next slide, please. So here are the art and the artworks. Um, so eventually, with the various influences of the colonizers. So Juan Luna was a Filipino painter, sculptor, and political participant during the late 19th century Philippine Revolution. He rose to prominence as one of the first Filipino known artists. He's winning the gold medal at the 1884 Madrid Exposition of Fine Arts along with a fellow Filipino painter, in which sparked a celebration that was a major highlight in the memories of members of the propaganda movement. Luna painted literary and historical settings, some of which included political commentary and was regarded for work produced in the style of European academies of his time. His allegorical works were inspired with classical balance and often showed figures in theatrical poses. Next slide, please. So Luna's notable works are The Death of Cleopatra in 1881, Spolarium in 1884, The Battle of Lepanto in 1887, and Sueños de Amor, 1890, and The Parisian Life, 1892. Next slide, please. Fernando Armersolo was the first national artist of the Philippines and is referred to as the Grand Old Man of Philippine Art in official publications. Amarsolo's paintings typically depict scenes in brilliant rural landscapes, such as farmers knee-deep in rice fields, women in colorful barotsayas picking through mangoes, and vibrant social portraits. He is renowned for his distinctive luminosity and ability to render the quintessential provincial Filipina. Fernando's notable works are... Next slide, please. Seated Woman with a Bashful, bashful Smile in 1928. Elias and Salome, 1934, Intramurus, 1941, Fruit Gatherer, 1952, and Rice Planting, 1949. Next slide, please. Pancita Abad, a modern painter and born in Basco, Batanes, Philippines. Her earliest paintings were mostly figurative and social or political, covering subjects like hunger. Her work then expanded to include naturalist subject matter. Inspired by the places she saw on her travels to exotic locations, this colorful, colorful work of vibrant patterns segued into her most well-known practice as an abstract painter. Next slide, please. 
So her notable works are African Mephisto, 1981, Death of Ninoy, 1983, Intense, 1992, The Sky is Falling, The Sky is Falling, 1998, Life in the Margins, 2002. So here are the chosen artists in Visayas. Next slide, please. Napoleon Abueva. He has the title of Philippines National Artist for Sculpture and is also known as the father of modern Philippine sculpture, being recognized as a national artist of the Philippines in the discipline of visual arts. He is the first and only Boholano to get this honor. Next slide, please. So his notable artworks are Kaganapan, 1953, Kiss of Judas, 1955, Bataan Memorial Cross, 1970, The Transfiguration, 1979, and Nine Muses, 1994. Next slide, please. Martino Abellana. He was a Filipino-Asian modern and contemporary painter. He polished his abilities under the guidance of renowned artists, Filipino artist painters, Fernando Amorsolo and Guillermo Tolentino. Together with his friends and fellow painter Professor Julian Humalon, Abellana helped found the University of the Philippines Cebu's Fine Arts Program, where he had the greatest impact on and influence over subsequent generations of Cebuano painters. Next slide, please. His notable artworks are Cave Dwellers, 1952, the painting of an old woman in which it is untitled in 1974, Landscape, which is known as Marikina, 1978, Seascape, 1978, Fisherman, 2013. Lastly, the artist in Mindanao. Kublai Milan or Kublai, shortened from Ray Mudyahid Ponce Milan, is a prolific artist from Mindanao. He is renowned for his enormous sculptures. Along with being a sculptor, he is also a performance artist, computer artist, painter, and art photographer. Kublai began his career by creating all the artwork for the Ponce Suites, his family's hotel, both inside and outdoors, in which the hotel's manager is his mother. He completed his higher education at the University of the Philippines, where he earned a fine arts degree. After earning his call, his notable works are Kampilan, Rise and Christ in the Church of Tagum, Avowed Series 1, and more of like this, but in different position and colors or how it is a series. So the three of this did not have any mention date on when were they finished. And the Durian, 2003, Balot Vendor in 2010. Now for the famous artworks in Vizbimin. First is Juan Luna's Polar Polarium. So this is considered as the largest painting in the Philippines. It features a bloody gladiator matches of romance, but it is also an allegory to the despair and abuses that the Filipinos suffered from during the Spanish reign in the country. Next is Planting Rice, uh, which is completed in 1921 by Fernando Omorsolo. So this painting depicts a group of farmers toiling under the sun. It is one of the most popular paintings of Fernando Omorsolo. Next, we have um, ben uh, Benedicto Cabrera's Casabel, or Benkab, uh, which was finished in 1964. So the woman in the painting is Sabel, who is a homeless Filipino woman that the painter Ben Cab photographed and first sketched in 1965. So the disposition of the woman in the painting became a symbol of dislocation, despair, and isolation for the painter. So Sabel is also a recurring subject in Ben Cab's figurative paintings. Then we have Madonna of the Slums in 1950 by, by Vicente Manansala. So this painting pictures a mother who is struggling to care for her child due to poverty. So the title refers to Madonna which is a religious figure associated with poverty and motherhood. So this is a reminder that despite poverty and hardship, there is hope and beauty. Then we have another Juan Luna painting, which is entitled The Parisian Life in 1892. So this painting depicts the gathering of the three significant personas and heroes in the Philippine history, having a discussion about the Philippines on the eve of momentous events during the springtime in Paris. So the woman represents the Philippines. Uh, she was wearing pink and white to symbolize the purity of the country. But her suggestive seating position depicts abuse from its colonizers. Now we're going to proceed with... So indigenous uh, people's art has bold patterns has vibrant colors, and their themes are nationalistic. Next slide, please.
first artist we have Armand Dayoha. He is an artist and also an activist. His art is also called is also called art of resistance because he's also an activist. Before finally taking up fine arts in UP Cebu, he first completed a degree in psychology in the same school also. Next slide, please. His notable artworks are Anak sa Adlaw, Second Pintado, last one is MOP or Mimings Operation Patay. Next slide. Second artist, we have Ryan Arces. This painting, which is called Puloy Anan, showed an abstract of jag mountains splash with iridescent colors symbolized the ancestral domain of indigenous communities that had been driven from their homeland by colonial power since the 17th century the colors also represented the ip sovereignty over their territories next slide please Last artist, we have Pasita Apad. Her most extensive body of work is her vibrantly colorful Chapunto paintings, mixed media painted textile collages, and abstract assemblages. And these are some of her notable artworks. First, we have from the year 1979, Turkana Women. Second, from year 1989, Mani in Taipei. Last one, Balloon Boy from year 1981. And that is all. Thank you for listening.